The award you're giving me, the Warren McCulloch Award, could be considered an award for lifelong achievement. Achievement. The award I'm receiving, however, is the award for lifelong avoidance. <laughs> avoidance. Avoidance doesn't mean to just not do something. Avoidance happens when you do not something. When you do, but not something. I think of avoidance as something I do that I'm proud of. It goes like this. Somebody says, why do I have to go to school? Important question. Answer, in order to learn what to avoid. <laughs> See what's done, you avoid that. That's avoidance. So I am suggesting we could shift the paradigm temporarily from achievement to avoidance. Woo. Avoidance becomes the landmark, not to forego achievement, but to dethrone it temporarily. Late at night when you sum up to yourself what you've done, <laughs> what you've achieved, I don't know if you have these late night <laughs> accountings, <laughs> one of the things you could pat your shoulder on is what you have avoided. While we speak positively of learning, Monday night it was said that Gregory Bateson learned and learned, there is merit to refusing to learn, to refusing to learn. So someone's trying to teach me that the systems we see in place are way bigger than any particular group's ability to change it. That's a lesson I'm refusing to learn. People are trying to teach us that humans are only motivated by fear or greed. But I'm not learning that lesson. The list of things I have refused to learn is huge. Bateson wrote the article, The Cybernetic Explanation. And it's in a similar vein to avoidance and refusing to learn. He proposes that rather than really pursuing cool. the question, why did, does this happen, that a more fruitful question is, why did the other things not happen? Not. For those of us who create sentences, and I know you all do, we're aware that part of a sentence's significance comes from the alternatives we speakers and writers have rejected. The significance of a particular sentence comes partly from the alternatives we've rejected. We've named our school the School for Designing a Society. We, and you could hear think, we could have named it the School for Resigning Ourselves to Society. The School for Fitting In and Getting Away With It While Looking Good and Doing Bad. There was all sorts of names. We tried to name the School for Composing a Society, but then everybody thought it was for singing. So we moved that name. But the significance of the words we chose came partially from the words we rejected. We rejected. I'd like to end this acceptance speech with <laughs> a brief interview with Susan Rose Parenti. Susan Rose. Rose is a rose. Yeah. Susan Rose Parenti. Okay. Interviewer. Hello, Susan Parenti. Tell us a bit about yourself. Susan. About me? Oh, goody. I want to tell what I avoid and what I refuse to learn. Interviewer. Avoid. Refuse to learn. That's so negative. Tell us what you do, not what you don't do. Tell us what you do do. Susan. Do do. <laughs> you messing with me? Do do? Okay. I do do. I do do write music that cannot function as background. I do write skits and theater where the conversations go the way I want. Ha <laughs> ha. I do teach at the School for Designing a Society in Illinois, where we notice that by paying attention to participants' language, it really improves their thinking and caring. Interviewer. Very Ooh. good. Next question. Susan, wait, not done. And I do participate in activities that are politicizing. Interview. Good. Next question. No, Susan. And I do take care of people I love when they're old. Uh, enough. Quite a list. Uh, you're all over the place, aren't you, young lady? It looks like uh, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. Ha ha. Susan. Thank you. That's one of my favorite put downs. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> See, I'm not only committed to living in a certain way, I'm also committed to the insults, dismissals, and put downs that that way of living invites. Mm -hmm. Jack of all trades is one of my fave put downs. It's a little sexist, sexist makes it better. There's some put downs I don't like, and I put down those put downs. But there's some I do, and I put those put downs. Oh, stop! <laughs> you sure talk a lot. Tangential thinking, too. Just like a woman. <laughs> See, that's another put down I like. Tangential thinking. Ge Interviewer, do you have any children? <laughs> Susan, children, I told you I prefer to take care of people when they're old and you need help, not when they're young. Interview. <laughs> huh, no children. Sad. Susan, what? Interview. Do you have any other unfulfilled, unfulfilled dreams? <laughs> Award, <laughs> like, um, a voice. Thank you. <laughs> 